Africa and part of our economic deficiency lies in logic, common sense and reason. So if you look at the world in terms of pockets of logic and common sense, Africa is challenged. So we have to step up. So Mr. Zobba. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, right. So, my name is Etzai Cornelius Robo, and I'm a mathematician. Not just a mathematician, a math genius. Okay. <laughs> right. So, uh, this is not just a proclamation, but it's a proven fact. So, I celebrate my geniushood with pride. Uh, I would like to thank you all for being here tonight uh, to be part of this event where we are gathered to celebrate the advances that we've made as, as a people, as Africans, and to ponder on what it is that we can do in order to move forward. So some of you might have seen uh, some of my presentations on, ra uh, on TV or heard them on radio is I am the face of mathematics for SABC. So when they do all their outreaches, uh, when they go into schools, uh, when they need opinion pieces with regards to education, uh, they tend to uh, look to me. I was born and bred in Zimbabwe. That is where the lottery of life took me to start this uh, journey of life. I grew up in Harare, went to school in, uh, in Harare, and came to South Africa in 2005, and I've never felt like a Zimbabwean ever since. Because I am a citizen of the world, I have been touched by people from different, uh, different regions of the world. So the only thing that I know is that humanity is what binds us. Humanity is what brought you here. Humanity is what's making you listen to me today. And there's no delimitation according to boundaries. Because boundaries are artificial. There was a co committee of people that set in Europe uh, prior to 1873. Uh, and they said, let us divide Africa according to our needs. So the British took a portion. The French took a portion the Belgians, and we subscribe to these boundaries, these nationalities, which is something that we need to have a conversation about. So everything that I've done is based on mathematics. Not that mathematics is the only vehicle that will help you move forward, but it is a strategic pillar for development. Just going back a bit, when I came here in 2005, I started off as a teacher. I taught at a high school in Pretoria. And I was in for a culture shock, where I, I was used to the schools in Zim, where if you're a teacher, you come there, the kids are three, four topics ahead of you. They were proactive, right? And then coming here, it was a bit different in terms of attitude. So I said to myself, what is it? Why are people so afraid of maths? Why is the phobia so rife, cutting through the whole cross-section of society? And then I decided, okay, let me just write some little motivational talks, uh, notes for my kids that I'm teaching. Then I realized that by the end of the year, 60% of my lessons were actually motivational, 40% were instructional. But my kids were actually getting better grades than the rest of them. So I thought, okay, why not publish a book? Then I, those notes, I compiled them, I published a book which is entitled The Mathematical Genius in You, uh, which to date has sold over 100,000 copies across South Africa and uh, overseas as well. And in this book I'm saying, what is it that Rose did 
in order to be so successful, in order for us to still be fighting this statue to this day. Someone who died almost a century ago. What is it that he did? What is it that the Europeans did that we Africans didn't do? And it came to two basic uh, tenets of life, which are problem solving and decision making. Problem solving and decision making. The book, uh, it went viral. Uh, SABC adopted the book. A number of corporates have adopted the book. Then I thought, okay, uh, this teaching thing is not mine because people are not motivated, even though the book was, was a success. Then I moved on to uh, the gaming world in Las Vegas, where I was doing um, uh, the math and stats models for, for all the games, like the ones you see in Monte Casino. And there, I saw the reality of poverty. And poverty is not just uh, for black people. It's not just for white people. Poverty knows no bounds. Poverty is a function. It's dependent on your thinking. Poverty is how you're solving problems, your adaptability, your problem solving and decision making skills. So I saw that I was contributing to, uh, to the scourge of poverty by, by being part of the cartel uh, of these gaming companies. So for your own information, you'll find that in this whole world, there are nine companies that dominate the whole gaming industry in the world. So when you go to Monte Casino, there's nothing proudly South African or proudly African. It's cartels out there in Europe and America. So I came back and then I founded the company Maths Genius Leadership Institute. And there, I, like a madman, I was going around the country, I was going around Sadak, talking about the need to change our thinking, the need for us to be able to actually translate that which the African Union is saying, African solutions to African problems. But do we even know what the African solutions are? Do we even know what the African problems are? So this is something that I went and I said, we can use mathematics to teach people how to think. Because mathematics, as taught in high school, is very wrong. How many of you have done maths in class where you do 1 plus 1 equals 2, 2 plus 2 equations, and, and you're following very nicely. But then when you go home, it's like you've never seen this before. How many, how many, how many have ever experienced that? Anyone? Wow. Okay. Yeah, a decent number. It's because people are teaching, I mean, teachers are generally teaching what is known as uh, the art of parotology. That word officially doesn't exist in English, by the way. It's uh, something that I made up. To say, we are just following without reason, without critically thinking uh, what our held beliefs really hold, uh, do they hold, hold true? So we have to teach each other how to think. And mathematics is that one thing that will lead you to uh, success. Because it will teach you structure, it will teach you discipline, but it will teach you a holistic path to success in mathematics. So, how did I end up with uh, 1873? I started off uh, by realizing that uh, Mr. Mtuma Mawere was part of this network and he was an icon in Zim. When I was growing up, we used to hear about Mtuma Mawere and I was like, okay, let me go and find out what is this thing that someone as intelligent as Mr. Mtuma Mawere would be willing to join. So I went in and I said, okay, what is this 1873 network? So the first thing that I was told was that, oh, the network is about a borderless Africa. And I said, what, what is a borderless Africa? What ethos are we, are we sharing such that we can be able, we can be capacitated to solve our own problems? So, I went through a, a quick MBA in the network, mingling with different minds that actually taught me how to use my mathematics for even bigger things than 
uh, I really was, right? Because I was focusing on the instructional aspect of mathematics. So I said to myself, I'm going to write a book on politics, the politics of mathematics, the politics of saying, why do we make 30% a pass? Are we saying that we don't expect much from our kids? Why is it that every child in Japan can do mathematics, but we can't do it here? Is it a measure of intelligence? That's the problem. What is wrong with us? Is it the fact that we can't do mathematics, the reason why we actually got colonized in the first place? We have the most mineral resources in Africa, but we did not convert what is between our ears to mechanisms that, were a that enabled us to extract that value from, uh, from underneath the ground. We had to wait for Europeans to come in and, uh, and extract it. And then now we're saying it's ours. But is it really ours? Because we didn't have the capacity to extract it. So these are questions that we should ask ourselves before claiming that those minerals are ours. It is too much of a, it's, it's a cliche when you find wherever an African government is taken, a black government is taken over. There has been a demise in the quality of life, generally for the citizens. So is it that we are a doomed race? Are we incapable of thinking? Are we incapable of solving our own problems? Now, I looked at the values of the 1873 network, and then I looked at the axioms of Jewish economic theory to say, why is it that Jews are making it? Did they have a first proof advantage? What is it that makes them so special? Then I looked at uh, Isaac Newton. He wrote a theory on physiocracy. Physiocracy, which blends in very well with the Jewish economic theory and the Islamic Sharia banking and you know that, 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 that uh, concept. Then I say to ourselves, why, uh, why don't we have an established system? Why is it that black people don't write? My history, the history of my forefathers, it was all oral tradition uh, before the white people came and wrote it on our behalf. Right? So what is it? What, uh, what's wrong with us? So uh, the values of the 1873 uh, network state that, first of all, we are from the Creator and everything that we do is based on the fact that we are from the Creator and we've been given all that we need to be able to achieve in this lifetime. All the tools that you need are here. There is something called soft wealth and there's something called hard wealth. Hard wealth are those physical resources that you can manipulate, that you can transform in order to realize wealth. The soft wealth is what's in between your ears. Now, if you hear of anyone saying they are creating, that's a lie. The creator already created, but it's us merely transforming, transfiguring, changing, a resource from being an unpolished diamond to a polished diamond. It's us thinking to say, people don't have means, a convenient means of coming up with, uh, of looking for a taxi, so somebody starts up with an Uber. They are taking the soft world and using it to manipulate the hard world. So, do we have less, less soft wealth compared to the Europeans. Why is it that not much has come out of Africa in the last uh, century or so, scientifically? Why do we have to wait for aid? Why do we have to be the victim at all times? So it's something that you need to think about. 
Then, the first one is that uh, everything comes from the Creator, right? And we have everything that we need in order to succeed in this lifetime. Then, the second one is the rule of law is necessary for prosperity. So, imagine you've worked hard all month. You've worked hard all month. And then, when you wake up, you hear that uh, the government has taken all the money and they thought that maybe building the N1, uh, maybe making it wider, was more important than you having your money in the bank. That means that there's no rule of law. There's no uh, respect for private property. So, why don't we understand that? Because you find that when people come up with policies, right? Like the policy makers, they say, we, the state, are going to take away the farms from those and we are going to nationalize them. This is how we're going to achieve economic freedom. For me, I believe that that doesn't work. For me, I believe that that is an example of not understanding the concept of wealth creation. Because that is more mentality to say, we as a group, under the guise of an umbrella, we as an idea of a state, we are going to move forward and we are going to impose our will on these people because in the lottery of life, we found ourselves being born in a certain geographical area. Instead, we should be looking at the individual as the unit of society. Because society doesn't exist. It's an idea, but an individual exists. And an individual has the power to manipulate his, his or her environment in order to come up with something tangible, in order to create wealth. So, uh, I'm being told that uh, my time is almost up. So it, uh, we are very glad that uh, Advocate Dali is here today and is going to help us shape the idea of economic justice and sure, thank you. And, and it is it is an open discussion where we have to contribute also so that by the time we leave here we have an idea of how to accumulate wealth what is it that we can take the cues that we can take from those who have made it those societies that have made it So in my book, you'll find that uh, my wife, Matebe, had to uh, tell me to remove some, t some chapters uh, because uh, they were too provocative. I was going head on. I wasn't uh, missing anyone with my machine gun principle that I was taking. So you find that uh, I have the first part. It's South African Maths Education, where I talk about uh, how maths can help in terms of innovation, and why just focusing on mathematics alone is a futile exercise. Why throwing resources at problems, which is a prevalent uh, thing that's happening in South Africa, where, okay, the kids are not doing math, uh, well in maths, let's give them uh, iPads. Okay, uh, this is, so we're throwing resources instead of promoting resourcefulness. And resourcefulness can only be achieved if people are taught to critically think and to be able to solve problems. Then, I talk about mathematical thinking, that's the second part. Mathematical thinking, what is it that you need as an entrepreneur, as an employee, as an employer? How can you uh, make your problem solving skills better? So that you can advance yourself and in the process, uh, we can talk about trickle down theory, we can talk about what, but at the end of the day, if each individual pushes to their max, then the aggregate result is very positive. Then I talk about mathematical happiness, uh, of which you know the founding fathers of America, when they 
when they uh, sat down and came up with uh, the idea of America, one of their pivotal ideas was the pursuit of happiness. So I just thought to myself that a lot of people are not finding joy. They are limited in their, in their vocations. They are limited in their choices because they do not have mathematics. Right? And then I talk about gender equality because gender equality is that low-hanging fruit which we have to respect, which we have to pursue in order to, have, to, to move society forward. So anything that we speak and there's no gender equality in it is bound to fail. It's not good enough. So let us not just do it because BEE says uh, or legislation says that we should do it, but we should do it from the heart because we are all human. It's about humanity. Whether you're a man, whether you're a woman, whether you're yellow bone or as dark as me, at the end of the day, it's about being human. Then I look at uh, miscellaneous stuff where I even talk about the idea of uh, prepaid airtime. So you can read it and find out that prepaid airtime is one of the biggest uh, scams of the 20th, 20th and 21st century. You're, you're banking your money with mobile networks that don't have banking licenses. So I'll, I'll try and uh, arrange my argument nicely and hopefully Advocate Dali will help me uh, uh, push this one forward. Thank you very much. <laughs>